Welcome back. This is the final installment of the Gadget Guru special report that I've named What You Need to Know Before Buying a Motor Home. In a moment, I'll join my guest, Steve Ziegler, the director of Bus Shell Sales at Prevo, and Gil Johnson, a noted Prevo buyers consultant. Here's a list of topics discussed in this chapter of the series. Also, toward the end of this chapter, I'll provide an overview of recommended online resources that you may find helpful in obtaining information about the motorhome lifestyle. If you missed part one or part two, a link is posted up here in the comments below, and of course, links to all my motorhome videos are found on GadgetGuru.com. Now here's part three of what you need to know before buying a motor home. Gil, I'll throw this one at you. A common question found in motor home forums has to do with the cost of maintaining a Prevo and you have to have a budget set aside as Prevos are a lot more expensive to maintain than a typical Class A motor home. Gil, is that a fact or is it fiction? Well, I, I think just before I answer that, let me let me kind of set one thing straight. And a lot of people believe that a Prevo costs extraordinarily more to maintain than a traditional R, uh, Class A or motorhome. That is absolutely untrue. You know, we got the same number of tires and same number of batteries and those things that are recurring expenses that you can schedule. There's not a whole lot of difference in, in cost. Um, so the cost to, to operate and maintain well let's stay out of the operational cost because that's driven on how you operate it but maintenance cost uh, you can figure you know it's going to cost you a thousand dollars a year to do those things that have to be done beyond that it's really the age of the coach and how it's been maintained that's going to dictate how much money that you need to set aside to keep this thing going so we're at a thousand we know we're all there if i'm looking you know somebody's going to look at a coach that's 2000 to 2005 kind of coach you know that that number to kind of set on the side and potentially budget for it i tell a person that you know earmark five grand um over time you know you got some things that you're rarely ever going to do you know you're going to put seven thousand dollars worth of tires on it at seven to ten years and you're going to put you know six thousand dollars worth of batteries on it in five to seven years whatever those numbers are those one-time recurring costs if we kind of want to uh, average those out over the life i tell people in that 2000 to 2005 range or thereabouts budget five grand and at the end of the day you're probably going to have plenty of money left over to enjoy yourself do you need a special license if you want to operate a Prevo motorhome in the United States? Nobody can ever make you have a commercial driver's license for a non-commercial vehicle. So as long as it's registered and used as an RV, some states for vehicles over 26,000 pounds typically, they may require like a non-CDL class B driver's license. And, and there's several states in that category, but uh, generally speaking, you know, it's just, a, it's just, just another revenue source for those states. Yeah, you got to got to go take a driver's test, physical test in the vehicle, and you you have to take another written test. But they're they're not big deals. So just uh, that shouldn't for somebody that's competent to be able to drive these, that shouldn't be a deterrent. Gil, you deal with a lot of newbies, a lot of first-time buyers when you're doing your pre-purchase inspections when they're typically buying a pre-owned motorhome. For a first-time buyer, what sort of advice do you give them about what you need to know or how do you learn how to safely drive and operate something, a vehicle of this size? When I do this, it's like at the end of the day, you've got a vehicle that's 50-some thousand pounds. It's not going to stop on a dime. If you're used to driving a Corvette and your driving style puts your front bumper on somebody else's rear bumper, you got to learn to get away from that. And the other, the biggest thing is really about the turn radius of these vehicles. Not only are they long, their wheelbase is extreme. So the biggest part of any time that I'm doing training with, with a, uh, you know, a new buyer is making sure that they can take that right hand turn, the turn that's the hardest turn to take in these. But, you know, you can be, you rightfully should respect the vehicle you're in because it's so different than a car but it shouldn't drive you away if you're a competent driver. There's just a few things you got to do that you haven't done before, and it may take a little time to you know, back off that vehicle a little bit further than you're used to and making sure that you don't mind coming almost to a stop, if not a stop, to take a right-hand turn. But there's a few aspects in there, 
but they, a competent doc, driver should not be deterred from that. Let's talk about inspections. I know a number of people who feel they're just a waste of money. They're not necessary and to simply trust the salesperson or the individual seller because they're being honest about the previous use and condition. Why should someone get an inspection prior to purchasing a motorhome? Gil, I know you do this for a living. So what's involved and what's the cost of a typical inspection? When it comes to inspections, and frankly, these are things on the Prevo Motorhome side of the business that weren't happening to a large degree. Uh, just a few years ago uh, and interfacing with buyers all the time through the Prevo owners group is I find that there were some people that were buying coaches that they got them and they found out it was going to cost them and it, just a lot of money to get the coach correct. Um, so I don't want to say the coaches were ever misrepresented because it's sometimes the buyer doesn't know enough to inform the seller um, mm -hmm. or vice versa. So uh, if you go out and buy a yacht you're going to get it surveyed. If you're going to buy a house, you're going to have a home inspection. You're buying a high dollar, highly complex integrated machine. It's probably worth your while if for no other reason uh, than peace of mind to understand what you've got. I look at inspections from two uh, standpoints. There's the Pro Prevo chassis that you should have looked at. You know, these things, especially for those that are 10, 15 years old, there's a lot of things that happen underneath that people don't see. Um, Prevo does what they call a detailed mechanical inspection. They'll go over the entire coach and they'll do that for, you know, five to $800. Well worth your money if you happen to be near a Prevo facility. And, and Steve touched on those 17 service facilities, but there's also the charter bus industry that they serve that some of those actually bring in outside work. Another avenue to actually have that chassis inspected. And then, although I go over a lot on the Prevo side, I'm not an undercarriage guy, I'm not going underneath. But I go through the, the house side, and the house side can vary tr just tremendous differences from one converter to the next and converter year to converter year. So there's a lot going on just to make sure all of those systems function the way that they're supposed to. And where we can find service records, we're gonna go through those as well. One of the things that, uh, that we really wanna be looking at and what buyers should be looking at is that that coach that's offered for sale it may have low miles, that's, that's okay. It may have high miles, that's okay. What's important when I'm looking at one of these coaches for a prospective buyer is to make sure that it's been used to some degree in the last couple, three years before it's sold. Oftentimes, some of these coaches, the last two or three years, they sat idle before the uh, seller decided, you know what, it's doing me no good, I need to get rid of it. A coach that sits, any, anything that has moving parts with seals in it, that sits is not good. So we're trying to make sure that um, you know, there's not going to be any surprises a thousand miles down the road. Peace of mind. Um, so because I'm doing this for peace of mind, that this is not a you know this is not a big money maker. So at the end of the day, uh, you know I charge three hundred dollars a day to to look at these coaches. And if you give me a good long day, I may not hit a hundred percent of what is on that coach. I'll hit enough of it that you'll get good peace of mind as to whether or not it's uh, it's a coach you want. You need to negotiate some of these things out of the price, or in some cases, let's walk and let's move on to the next coach. With sales going off the charts at the moment, you know there's going to be some people who buy these, and maybe after a trip or a week or a month, maybe even a year, they might decide it's not for them. They're going to want to resell it. What should they know about resale values? Yeah, so resale values, at the end of the day, they're going to be market-driven, right? So. Uh, I would tell you right now, if you had a bunk coach, a 2005-ish bunk coach that you thought you wanted to sell, if that coach is in good shape, it's gone. Because right now we've got all these people wanting to take their families out there and there's not a lot of bunk coaches. You know, So it really depends on the market at the time. But somebody that buys one and they keep it for a year and they're trying to anticipate what their total cost is gonna be once they get rid of it a year later, well, you know, you should go into it knowing that you're probably going to lose 10% right off the bat because that's generally what it costs uh, for commissions at, these, at most of the independents to sell them. Um, from there, I would tell somebody rather than look at what you're going to, uh, what, it, what you're going to recover at that sale is to realize up front these are not investments. So you have to factor in the, the um, the entertainment value, the family lifestyle value that you gain by owning one of these rather than looking at dollars in, dollars out. 
Steve, since you're involved on the Prevo side of both passenger and entertainer buses, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you what's going on in those divisions. Yeah, I appreciate you that opportunity to speak to that, Andy. Uh, I, the entertainer division, it's a shell, so it falls under uh, my management. That market has been rolling along here, even though there's no touring at all going on. Uh, we continue deliveries to our uh, customers in the entertainer market. However, uh, over the last three weeks, as states have opened up and some haven't opened up and COVID is, is popping up again, um, and the state restrictions for large gatherings are continuing, we're starting to see a very conservative approach in our entertainer market. People are just pulling back. It looks like the 2020 uh, touring season is absolutely a bust at this point, uh, just because we cannot, uh, the tours, the bands cannot cobble together a, you know, a, a tour throughout the various states that they can count on and make money to cover their basic, basic costs to get out there. So they're itching to get out there and to perform. But right now, 2020 season's a bust. But uh, 2021 tours are already starting to book. The ones that missed were booking and the venues are getting uh, set for next year. So it looks like we're just going to miss this season. Uh, my customers in that market are very optimistic. They know they've just lost this year, but they're optimistic about going into. So we see uh, fourth quarter of this year uh, deliveries picking up in that market, and we'll, it should be just fine once uh, the bands are able to tour again. In our passenger bus market, that's a different story. That whole industry has just been decimated because that's all tour-related, school-related, moving children special. So they've missed this whole summer season. Uh, that's going to be about a three to probably a two to three year recovery in that tour market. It's all going to be dependent on, you know, social distancing. Those are 56 passenger buses. How does, what does that business look like going forward? And so that's the discussions that are taking place there right now. So uh, we've had a big downturn in production uh, on that side of the business, and that'll go through uh, the first or second quarter of next year. Now, I have noticed through some emails that I get from Prevo that you send out to, to all your customers that you have some new innovations of what you're doing, some dividers or some acrylic partitionings that keep people safe when it's time to get back on a passenger bus. Yeah, we've come up with some plexiglass dividers around the driver area to protect the driver from passengers coming in. And then where we've been able to seclude where it makes sense, we've come up with seat spacing uh, recommendations to uh, for the social distancing. We've also come up with plexiglass dividers that come around the passenger around their head and shoulders and can protect them within their seats. And then there's a variety of cleaning systems out there that we've evaluated and that we're recommending to our people and to the cleaning processes to go. Our customers in that market were really far ahead already of before COVID coming out on their cleaning procedures, but they've upped that and with uh, a lot of the cleaning procedures out there in the market, they're ready for customers now. And it's just a matter for the touring and uh, the vacationers to come back and the schools to open in the fall. If you're watching this video because you're a newbie, you're probably looking for some good, solid online information. Let me tell you, like, what's happened to so many industries these days. There's a lot of commercials, a lot of ads, a lot of paid placements. You know, if you want to look for some good non-commercial information, here's a few sites for you to visit. For all things surrounding the recreational vehicle lifestyle, check out rvtravel.com and be sure to register for their free newsletters as they are packed full of information and delivered in a non-commercial format. RV Travel is the longest running publication in the RV world and its editor. Chuck Woodbury has done a remarkable job continuing to deliver news that you can use about many facets of the RV lifestyle. Best of all, he's not afraid to call them as he sees them. If you're a newbie and want to see both sides of the ownership story before buying, be sure to follow RV Horror Stories on Facebook. This page is operated by RV Travel and, while many of the stories are not pretty, they may be able to provide you some insight that you won't find at RV dealerships. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, you can join Bob Zagami and John DiPietro on RVing in New England on Facebook. It's a regularly scheduled online show that features guests and timely topics about all things RV. If you're thinking about camping in the New England area, this is a great show to watch. Immediately afterwards at 8 p.m. Eastern, you can join host Alan Warren on the RV Show USA. 
Warren is billed as a consumer advocate who works hard in the RV education field and has a variety of guests that range from industry experts to users. It's a radio show in a video format, and it's fun to watch. Because I would like you to look before you leap. While he retired from delivering daily RV news, I posted a link to Greg Gerber's RV Death Spiral series on GadgetGuru.com and simply stated it's an eye-opening look into the manufacturing side of recreational vehicles. A site that I used when I was a true newbie was RVEducation101.com. This is a series of online classes hosted by RV expert Mark Polk. While there's a fee for the courses, each lesson is well thought out and clearly explained with numerous demonstrations. For Prevo information, as mentioned in this video, you can find Gil Johnson on the PrevoOwnersGroup.com website and on its companion Facebook page. Both are populated by owners that are willing to insist in answering just about any Prevo-related question that you may have. There's also the PrevoCommunity.com forum that's filled with helpful owners who are willing to pitch in to answer questions and provide useful information. Finally, for those who want to keep up with what's going on in the recreational vehicle industry, check out RVBusiness.com. This is the online version of its print publication and it's updated regularly with information regarding new products or manufacturers, events and shows, and includes a directory of RV-related organizations. There's no cost to subscribe and a daily email is sent with news and RV-related announcements. Let me go on and take a moment, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Based on the comments, if we come up possible, we can do this again in the future. Let's plan on it. I love to do it. I appreciate you, Andy, giving us the opportunity. There are, like you said, so many resources out there. Gil's a fantastic supporter of the Prevo world and a great resource as well as you and all those resources that you mentioned. So, If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to click the like button and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. If you like this video, you're going to like this one. And if you like that one, you're going to like one of these. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.